Today we're going to replace the ignition coil and the points and condenser for this 1973 Han Eclipse Tiller with a 5 horsepower Briggs & Stratton engine. Our first step is to remove the air filter. We also want to inspect it, see what kind of shape it's in, and uh, clean it off a little later. You're going to notice that this machine is uh, wet because I just cleared all the mud off of it. So, nothing to be alarmed at there. Our next step is to remove the throttle cable. We need to do this in order to remove the cover. Our next step will be to remove the three bolts that hold the cover onto the engine. Now we should be able to remove the cover and set it aside, revealing the flywheel and the ignition coil. The ignition coil on this is not the correct one and we're going to install the proper ignition coil today. I want to remove my flywheel screen bolts here. They're fairly small, be careful not to lose them. and place the screen and the bolts aside where they won't be lost. You'll want to uh, use a flat punch and a holder. Place it right here. Use this ball peen hammer to tap it ever so gently to loosen it up. Once it's loose, you can go ahead and spin it off. And there's a nut, or I should say a washer right here. We'll remove that. Our next step will be to remove the flywheel. Now if I don't have any fancy tools, I can do this at home by placing uh, this clutch back on here. And I don't want to tighten it all the way down. I want to tighten it down with my hand and then back it off just a hair. And then I want to tap it nice and square with my large ball peen. You don't need to go crazy. And the flywheel should come off. Make sure that the flywheel key, make sure that the flywheel key comes out and is in good shape. If the flywheel key is nasty and damaged, we can replace it. They're only like a dollar, so it's not a big deal. The next thing I want to do is remove my ignition coil. This ignition coil was functional, but it's the wrong one. It's actually a little too big. It'll allow the engine to run, but it can cause overheating because the ignition timing is not exactly correct. There should be two bolts, but yet there's only one. That's because it's incorrect. So I'll set this aside. I'll use this quarter inch nut driver to remove this cover. Revealing my points and condenser. I next want to remove my spark plug, and you'll see here shortly why this is important. For those of you who are not familiar with Briggs & Stratton points ignition, it's the type of ignition that was used before 1983. However, there were some engines that were a bit earlier that had uh, modern um, electronic ignition. Now. 
Since I took that spark plug out, there's no compression, and I could easily turn my crankshaft with my hand. And if I can take a look at, this is my points area right here on the end of my condenser. And I can watch it barely move. See it there? When the gap opens is when we have a spark, not when it closes, when the gap opens. This is very similar to the type of system that we had in automobiles before the 1970s. This is a reliable system, but it does need more maintenance than electronic. And it's not hard to operate, and it's not hard to repair. You just got to know what you're doing. And so let's take a look. I'll use my quarter inch nut driver to remove my little hold down for my condenser. I want to set that aside. I use my quarter inch nut driver to remove my hold down for the other end of my breaker point. There's a small spring here. Your ignition kit should come with a new one. But go ahead and remove everything. There's a small little block of wood right here. A lot of people forget that part. That comes worn down with time and the ignition kit should have a new one in it. So be sure to remove it. Okay, there you go. Now don't forget to put in your uh, new little push rod here. The end with the little notch in it faces out. Very important part here. If you don't get that thing in, the engine will never run. So. Get that in there, make sure she moves pretty good. Next thing I want to do here is reinstall my ignition coil. Now, this is my new coil, and what I, I'm going to put it in here and get it lined up. Now, I don't have to line it up perfectly right now. I just want to have it on here so it's going to be easier for me to attach the wire to the coil. Now the most challenging trick of this whole operation is getting this wire that comes up from the on off switch of the engine and this wire which goes to the coil you have to get them through that little hole. Now that seems easy. Ah, but it's not. You gotta get them through underneath this little spring. So you got to push this down and hold it in there. And I, there is an actual special tool for this job. And uh, I don't have one. And I tried to order them through the parts store. And nobody seems to be able to get them anymore. Alright, now what I'm going to do is hold these little pair of cutters down here. Make sure that's lined up with my wire. I'm going to attempt to hold the spring down. <coughs> and work it through there. It's a lot easier said than done, that is for sure. After a couple of tries using these to hold the spring down, I was able to work it in there. So now I want to put it back over here and get ready to tighten it up. After I have my uh, condenser in place, I want to go ahead and put the other half in. This side isn't too bad at all. To make things easy, I want to go ahead and install my spring. Now, we need to place our little anchor here, and if you notice, the anchor has an index mark, so you can't screw it up. Go ahead, place our bolt in there, tighten it up with our quarter inch nut driver now I like to put my spring, my hold down spring on this stud first you don't have to do it that way but I've always felt it works easier so put that on there now we can put the
mechanism in place. Okay, now we've got to do some adjusting. Now that my points are set at zero to zero, it's time to put the cover back on. Put our little quarters in here. And tighten them up. Make sure our wires are going through the hole so we don't pinch them. If we pinch them, we could cut them open, shorting them out, which means we won't have any spark and the engine will not run. And I'll use my punch, tap it down in there. Very important, if you don't put the flywheel key in, things never going to run. And if a flywheel key is broken, your ignition timing can be off and the engine won't run. Don't forget to put our washer back on, our clutch. We'll use our ball peen hammer and our punch, tighten it up. Go ahead and tighten it down. Now you don't want your flywheel to be so close to the engine that it touches it. And then you have a problem with the magnet. We'll actually grab and stick. We don't want that. But you don't want it so far away that it doesn't work. I always say about the distance of a business card. My small engines teacher taught me that in high school and well, it's always worked out pretty good for me, so it should work out pretty good for you. Okay, got it tight, spin it around, no hang ups, nice and smooth. Now we got to put our spark plug back in. Now we need to install our new spark plug, thread it by hand into the hole. And tighten it up. You don't want to go crazy here. You can strip that aluminum head very easily. There we go. Okay. Fold everything up. Fold everything up. We need to reinstall our throttle cable. I have it in the full stop position. Our final step is to reinstall the air filter and take her for a spin and see how she runs. Let's see how she runs with our new points and coil. 